It's a new legal year and on today's episode of the program we bring you some of the ceremonies to mark and commemorate the year. I'm Shola Sheely. Welcome to this episode of Law Weekly on Channels Television. The annual vacation of judges across the country is usually between the months of July and September. The end of this vacation usually signals the commencement of a new legal year. On Monday, the 23rd of September, members of the bar and bench converged on the Supreme Court sitting in Abuja, the federal capital territory, for a special session to mark the 2019-2020 legal year. One of the high points of the session is usually the ceremony to mark the conferment of the rank of senior advocate of Nigeria on some deserving legal practitioners. At this year's event, 38 lawyers are being inducted. Only two of them are females. The induction brings to 548 the total number of senior advocates since the practice began in April 1975. The spokesperson for the new silks, Mrs. Adedo in Rhodes Vivo, commends the Legal Practitioners Privileges Committee, LPPC, on the thoroughness of the selection process. She also uses the opportunity to make a case for expanding the scope of matters to be accorded expeditious hearing while urging for the consideration of limiting the tiers of courts for arbitration-related proceedings. We should always remember that a country's legal system has an important role to play in our economic development. Investors are largely concerned that disputes arising from the investment relationship are resolved expeditiously. May I respectfully submit that expanding the scope of matters to be accorded expeditious hearing is in our country's interest. After the conferment, the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Tanko Mohammed, in his remarks, speaks about some of the successes of the Supreme Court under his watch. The 2018-2019 legal year, which ended on Friday, the 26th of July, 2019, was significantly remarkable. I was appointed in acting capacity in the course of the year after the unfortunate events that shook the Nigerian judiciary to its very foundation. During the 2018-2019 legal year, the Supreme Court entertained a total number of 1,874 cases comprising of motions and appeals. Out of these, we had 788 civil, 200 criminal, and 65 political, making a total of 1,114 uh, in all. Similarly, the court considered a total number of 759 appeals, comprising of 215 civil, 156 criminal, and 388 political. A total number of 324 judgments were delivered in the year. This scorecard is impressively fascinating. I attribute this tremendous success to the doggedness and the team spirit exhibited by my brother, justices, and the general staff. Like I always say, the Supreme Court of Nigeria is the busiest and the most hardworking Supreme Court in the world. It is a record that we work from Monday to Friday every week. Even as we celebrate the huge success recorded in the past year in disposal of cases, the Nigerian public needs to be reminded on the need to do less litigation and embrace more all alternative dispute resolutions to free the courts of this unnecessary overstretching of their human and material resources. As rightly observed 
Nigerians are the most litigious people on earth. In every little disagreement, we rush to court. And in every lost case, we rush to appeal. Even if to the, even to the Supreme Court. No matter how infinitesimal the issue might be. That is obviously counted for several appeals pending in the Supreme Court. The attitude of uh, some of the lawyers, too, is less salutary. Some do not even mind throwing their integrity and reputations to the winds by taking briefs that they do not hold the ground just for pecuniary reasons. So disturbing is the fact that even in the face of failure, they will still persuade their clients to push the case further on appeal. However, the solemn pledge we normally do is to always work assiduously with the required speed to dispose of cases that come before us. By the grace of God, under our leadership, that pledge, that pledge will be tenaciously held and the justice will as always be dispensed without fear, favor, affection, or ill will. The issue of financial independence continues to trail the judiciary, and as he is done in the recent past, the CJN again called attention to the issue. The issue of the salaries of judicial officers is still occupying the front banner of national discourse. It is one of the many issues yet to be addressed by the government. I make bold to say that the salaries of judicial officers in Nigeria are still a very far cry from an idea packaging to take home. Efforts should be made by the relevant authorities to increase the salary and also work out measures to improve the welfare packages of judicial officers, especially after retirement. The comfort of my brother justices in various courts across the country is one of our most priorities. And we will pursue it with all seriousness it deserves. Ideally, retired justices should be accorded the benefit of annual medical treatment locally and abroad. If the need arises to go for foreign Medicare, the gross underfunding and the neglect of the judiciary over the years have impacted negatively on the infrastructure and the personnel within the system. It is to a large extent affecting productivity, increasing frustration, and deflating morale. That is certainly not a good omen at this stage of our nation. The Constitution provides for separation of powers and independence of the three arms of government. I am using this medium to appeal to authorities concerned that all levels to free the judiciary from financial bondage as has been subjected to over the years let it not just be said to be independent, but it should, in other words, in action, be seen to be independent, truly independent. On the legislative judicial relationship, here's what the CJN had to say. With due respect, I add the legislative arm to closely be watching the decisions of the Supreme Court. If the court makes any decision, Without anybody telling the legislators to act, they should immediately follow suit by making laws that will encompass such decisions. 
the Supreme Court has no legislative powers to make the judiciary uh, request the legislator to effect certain amendments to the existing laws. There is no reason for the legislature to delay any amendments a relationship between the legislature and the judiciary. There should also be amendment to the Constitution to stop interlocutory appeals from coming to the Supreme Court. It should be ending at the Court of Appeal. The CJN and the President of the Nigerian Bar Association also have some words for the new SANs. The rank of Senior Advocate of Nigeria comes with immense prestige and greater responsibility as well. Those conferred with the rank automatically become members of the inner bar and the reward apostles of the Temple of Justice. It is an honor no conferee can afford to take for granted. The Legal Practitioners Privileges Committee painstakingly screened and holistically assessed all the documents submitted by the applicants before arriving at its decision. Even though we know that there is no human system that is infallible, at least concerning the efforts put in place by the committee, we assure everybody and we say boldly that an excellent job was done. Your elevation comes at a time that the profession, both the bar and the bench, is under siege, mostly at the instance of agencies that ordinarily should be our partners in law enforcement. It is no longer news that some law enforcement agencies seem to derive sadistic pleasure in locking up lawyers and imposing impossible bail conditions for their release, mostly in the course of investigating the professional functions of these lawyers. And I underscore, uh, investigating the professional functions of these lawyers. Indeed, the practice of law is now being criminalized by these agencies, all in an effort to demonize and humiliate lawyers and the legal profession. The practice of law has consequently become very dangerous and risky. To illustrate, it used to be the practice that lawyers under investigation, and this was far and in between, by law enforcement agencies were routinely granted administrative bail based on self-recognizance. Do these agencies truly believe that these lawyers, some of whom are senior counsel, will jump self-recognizance administrative bails? No, they do not. They do not so believe, but they are sworn to humiliate and desecrate our profession. In a number of these cases, the lawyers are investigated and so humiliated for carrying out their professional duties and nothing more. I underscore these issues because you all, by your elevation today, are leaders of the bar and have a sworn duty to safeguard and promote the rule of law. It behooves us, therefore, as lawyers and leaders of the bar to stand up for the independence of our profession and by so doing, push back on authoritarianism and malevolent abuse of power. We must, as members of the bar, speak with one voice in this regard. And you, as members of the inner bar, must join the NBA in taking the lead. That end will support and uphold the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria.